Hi everyone, it's Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage and today we're doing an oil change on the 356. So pretty simple process. Uh, we will be changing out the oil filter today. I do it every other time because it's a bypass filter. So that's up next on Heidi and Franny's Garage. Tools and supplies we'll need for this. Uh, some rubber gloves, roll towel, a little container, the, the pink container there is for the oil filter when I get it out. A spare drain plug, which I might be replacing. A turkey baster, which you'll see what that's for in a little bit. And a 19 millimeter wrench that you will need to get the drain plug off the bottom of the car. We'll also need a new oil filter. I have five quarts of oil and our oil container to put the used oil in when it comes out of the car. I want to walk you through the procedure for this. It's pretty simple. We're going to start by taking the car out and getting it nice and warm and then we'll bring it back, drain out the oil out of the bottom of the car. Then we're going to move up to the top in the engine bay here and we're going to take the oil filter out of the oil canister here and remove all the oil that's in the canister. We'll go ahead and put in a new filter and, and then uh, fill the canister back up with the oil. Then we'll get underneath the car again, go ahead and replace the drain plug and then get back up here, put the oil back in the car and check our levels and then finally we'll check for leaks. <music> Our drain plug is right here. It's a 19 millimeter and the, something curious about these drain plugs is that they don't have uh, crush washers underneath them. Kind of strange. They're conical shaped bolts so the tightness you put them in determines whether they're going to leak or not. So it makes it a little weird and I couldn't find a torque spec on it either. So um, I've always just sort of snugged them up until they don't leak. While this is draining, I wanted to point something out to you. This plate here, this black plate with the 10, 10 uh, nuts on it, uh, every 3,000 miles or so, maybe something like that, you'll want to probably pull that off. There's a screen in here, and then I don't know if you can see this sort of roundy bit here, uh, is a magnet under there. So if there's anything floating around inside your engine that's iron based at least, it'll stick to that magnet. And it's always a good idea to clean that, I'd say every 3,000 miles. I did it last time I did an oil change, so I'm not going to do it this time. There's 10 little aluminum crush washers underneath these. And always a good idea when you put these back to use a little bit of green Loctite. It will help seal the bolts so that they leak less. Because <laughs> they always seem to leak a little bit. But uh, there's also a gasket in there as well. Another thing I wanted to show you real quick like Bunny is take a look at this bolt. Can you see this? all those gouges in the faces. Somebody must have used a beaver to pull this bolt out at one point. And that's just a bad idea. It's not very good for the bolt and it's certainly not safe for the beaver. It's always best to use an actual wrench on this. It looks like really what somebody did was they must have put a pair of ice grips on this thing, but they really did a number on it. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this draining a bit. We're gonna go ahead and lower the car and we're going to get into the engine bay and get into the oil filter canister and get the oil filter out. So that's next. So now in the engine bay, this is the oil filter canister. It takes a 22 millimeter wrench to get this off and inside is one of these paper filters. So we're going to be pulling out the filter, then we're going to use our turkey baster to get the rest of the oil out from inside here. This cap is sort of spring-loaded. 
Not that it's going to go flying anywhere, but you just, you can see that there's a spring under it pushing it up. There we go. Big bolt. And the top. So the bolt also has on it a little copper washer on the back. It's a crush washer. I'm only, I only replace it when it really starts to sort of dribble out the top of that cap. There's also a rubber washer that goes over the top of this here. Uh, the kits always come with one, but I find that this rubber one works a lot better than the one that's in the kit. And once again, if it doesn't leak, you probably don't need to replace it, but you should feel it. Make sure it's nice and soft and stretchy and not getting hard and cracked anywhere. All right, we'll pull our filter out. There's a rubber gasket at the top and the bottom of this. So it can make it a little weird to get it off. There we go. Next, we're going to use a turkey baster to pull the rest of the oil that's inside here out. Eventually. All right, that was a good bit of oil, huh? Clean out the inside with a nice clean rag. Just sort of make sure everything's nice in there. It's a little hard to get your hand down in there. Also, there should be a little spacer that goes in the bottom to raise the filter itself up a little bit. Make sure that that's in there as well. We have our new clean filter here. It has a rubber seal at the top and at the bottom as well. So we're going to put a, just a tad bit of oil on it and slide it right on. Okay, so we just slide our filter on. There we go. Until it sits down on that little stand that I showed you before. Okay, now that you have your filter back in, it's always a good idea to go ahead and fill this thing up with a bit of oil. When you start the car, it doesn't have to wait so long to fill this back up. There's a, there's a hole up here at this connection, and what you want to do is fill this thing up until it gets just about to the top of that hole. Okay, I think we're there. The top cap up for the oil container, like I said, has this rubber seal that's in it, so we'll go ahead and uh, put a little bit of fresh oil on that as well. Okay, all we have to do now is just put our cap back on. Line up our little decal. We have our bolt with our crush washer on it. Helps to push the hat down just a little bit because of that spring that's in there. Now we certainly don't want to over tighten this. So I put it on hand tight, choke up on the wrench a little bit. It's one of those things that just needs to be tight enough so it doesn't leak. So cinch it down until it feels like it sort of stops and then maybe just an eighth of a turn more maybe. This next step is pretty simple but um, just dry everything off and make sure that everything's all nice and clean because you won't know if you have a leak if you still have schmutz all over this. So just make sure it's nice and clean. All right, so that's our oil filter back in and our oil uh, filter container top back on. I think we're all set here. The next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is put the drain plug in under the car. This one I have here is the new drain plug. This is the old original one that the beaver chewed on. I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the new one. Put our drain plug in. And remember, no crush washer. How weird is that, huh? Well, as I said, I couldn't really find a uh, torque spec for this. So it's just sort of run it down. Because it's conically shaped, you just want to sort of cinch it in. I like to choke up on the wrench a little bit so I don't get it too tight. And just kind of feel it. That feels good. It's probably close to about 35 foot-pounds would be my guess. Okay, our next step is going to be to put oil in. There's a little clip down here and just pull it up. And that goes up like that and we'll put the oil in. All right, we're going to put in four quarts. A few moments later. So our level is actually uh, pretty close to the top mark. At this point, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and start the car 
and let the oil circulate a little bit through it and then I'll wait a few minutes and check the oil again. Remember these 356's are not dry sump engines. They hold all of their oil in the case. There is no external tank with these things. When you check the oil on them you can use the dipstick and check it cold or you can run the engine a little bit, get it warm, and then turn the engine off and let it sit for a little bit and let the oil sort of drain down for a few minutes and then check your oil. The green light is our oil light. The red light is the generator light. So we want to make sure that when we start the car that the green light goes right out. Okay, so here we go. There we go, that's what we're looking for. We want that green light to go right out. And that's pretty good. I think I'm going to leave it there. It's very close to the mark. Oil looks good and clean. Go ahead and latch our oil filler. Okay, so no leaks on our drain plug here, so everything looks great. So we ended up putting in four and a half quarts of oil, and the cool thing is that I, now I have a half quart I can go ahead and put in the car and top off anytime I need to. Well, I hope you enjoyed this oil change on the 356. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, huh? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below, and we'll get right back to you on it. Thanks so much for coming. Love to have you. This has been really, really fun. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.